want to know what's bothering you in the world of sports. Give Murph a call at 312-644-6767. That's 312-644-6767. And tell him what's beefing you in the world of sports. What's Your Beef is brought to you by Brown's Chicken Sandwiches and Catering. And Brown's Chicken.com. What's Your Beef, my friends, at Brown's Lunchtime. Hey, remember this. Brown's three great words, it tastes better, and Brown's three other great words, value, quality, and consistency. Visit Brown's right now. It's lunchtime. Look at 24 minutes after 12 noon. You're hungry. Just up ahead on the left, unless you're going the other direction. Just up ahead on the right. There's a Brown's waiting for you. Find your nearest Brown's at brownschicken.com. Lunchtime, an Italian beef and Italian sausage. Put them together. Call it a combo. The favorite of Brown's president, Frank Portillo. Let's go to Bob in McHenry. Hello, Roberto. Hey, Mike. Hey, what's your beef today, Bob? My beef is, uh, can I, I'm begging the print media and the Cubs announcers to please cease and desist with reminding us how short Flatno and Terrio are. <laughs> I mean, this is, I mean, come on. They've been on a team of collective seven, what, seven, eight years? Uh-huh. I, I think I know how tall they are by now. And now on top of it, Murph, now yeah. they got Aaron Miles to throw into that. Oh, I know what you're talking about. In the uh, game over the weekend on TV, the three of them, right, were sitting together. Right. That was just yesterday. Right? Well, it was just, yeah, I watched so many games. Yeah, yeah Fontenot, Miles, and uh, 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 Terry are sitting together, and uh, Brendley or someone. Oh, there's the three shortest guys. Right, he calls it the short section. That must be the short section of the dugout. All right, okay, leave those guys alone. Okay, we know, they're short. Okay. You know what I like? About, uh, Bob, you remind me, I got some beefs here also. You want to hear one? Yeah. Blue uniforms. Do you know what that means? You watch the game, right? The Cubs and the Royals yesterday? Yeah, right. Yeah, that, you can't discuss They're the all wearing... The Royals and the... Don't they call up each other, the equipment guys, oh, before right. a game? They're right. all wearing the blue sh uh, uniform tops, the blue caps, the blue <laughs> shoes, yeah. the blue Who's socks. Up? They all look like they're on the same team. Hey, God, you're, you're a winner. Go visit my friends at Browns. Thanks, Mike. Okay, buddy. Hook up Bob and McHenry. Let's go next to... Uh, there we go. Let's hook up next with uh, Terry and Elgin. Hey, Terry. Murph, now that you got me starving, how you doing? <laughs> well, don't forget, also, uh, a great uh, uh, Maxwell Street Polish at Browns. You can't even find Maxwell Street anymore, but you can find them at Browns. What's your beef, buddy? Well, Murph, I got a quick question before I get to my beef. I don't want anybody's yeah. job, but Murph, what's your beef? What's my beef? My beef is, oh, how about meatball sandwich over there at Brown's, buddy? Oh, there you oh, go. Oh, with the marinara and the toasted French fries. And bloop, right on Super Fan Dan's tie. Hey, uh, yeah. mine is with the Chicago Park District. <laughs> okay. I don't care if you want to have ten concerts a year at Soldier's Field. But they should never do one a month before the bear season or any time during the bear season. Because? It just trashes the field, and the field's never in good shape the rest of the year. It tears up the field. Terry from Elgin, you're a winner. You're going to go visit my friends at Browns, and I'll tell you why, Terry. Not only was that a great beef, but you're one of the few guys like me that still likes to every once in a while let it slip and say, Soldier's Field, like we grew up with, right? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Soldier's Field. Hang on, Terry. You're going to go right. visit Browns also. Everyone's going to Browns, and everyone on hold going to get you on the uh, next round of phone calls. Let's catch up on a few things. It's Murph. Till 2. Hey, plant operations and facility vice president managers, thetowngroup.com. Piping, chillers, HVAC, big projects, repairs, replace, upgrades, thetowngroup.com. They do it right. They're my guys. West Town, North Town, Southwest Town, Northwest Town. Oh, the beautiful trucks with the red stripes. TheTownGroup.com, they do it right. All the things I That's my biggest beef with him. Yeah. Ah, welcome back. Second round of phone calls. What's your beef? Phone lines are jammed. Best beefs win a trip to the best beefs in Chicagoland. Browns, it tastes better. By the way, Browns has a preferred customer club that you got to be a part of. Just go right now to brownschicken.com. Check it out. Club membership. 
automatic uh, email notices of the specials over at Brown's. Instant access at home then. You download coupons to print and use at your neighborhood Brown's. And here's the best part. Exclusive offers going only to Brown's preferred customer club members. That would be you. Brownschicken.com. Let's get back to the beef lines. And he's been patient. He's Naperville Bob. Hello, Roberto. Hey, Murph. <laughs> hey, Bob. What's your beef? My beef's with afternoon hosts on the score who uh, get out of bed in the morning and turn on their sports news and find out that the Hawks had a big fight in the game night before in the game. No, they have no reason why they got into it. They don't know why. And then they sit on their show all day and talk about it and make fun of it. What's your beef? I appreciate it. Let's go next to Truck Phone. It's Mudbone. Hello, Bone. Hey, Murph, what's going on? Hey, what's your beef, Mud? Uh, my beef is with John Dewan's system he just talked about. Any system uh -huh. that uses spring training numbers to project <laughs> a stiff like Dwayne Wise to be anything more than a stiff he's always been and always going to be, has no credence, no validity, and should be completely discredited. I love your beef. Don't visit my friends at Browns. You know, it tastes better. Okay, mud bone. Beautiful. Hey, my friend. I tell you what. John DeWan's numbers over the years, they're always correct. We'll monitor these and see if indeed his 200-plus points slugging over career in spring training. They've looked this over for the last 5, 10 years, and they've found that it is true. I don't know about the Dwayne Wise. Let's get back to the phone. Hey, Murph. Yes, Jay Zawaz. What's your beef? Very busy. Oh, I thought you'd never ask. 50 miles. 50 miles? Yeah, 50 miles. Here's a tip. If you are a radio or TV guy doing spring training games for anybody, Cubs, Sox, anybody, here's a little tip. No one listening, no one watching cares that you had a long trip of 40 or 50 miles across the valley for your spring training game in the Cactus League. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to hear about how far you had to go in your car. Let's go to... Uh, Mundelein next. Totes is his name. Hello, Totes. Hey, Murph, how you doing today? Oh, great, Totes. What's just, your beef, buddy? I just got done whooping down a nice Maxwell Street Polish myself oh, there. Oh, uh, you know what? I go with the yellow mustard and the grilled onions myself. You have to. Hey, what's your beef? My beef is with the Baseball Veterans Committee system. Baseball? Yes. I'm still upset. I know I'm whooping a dead horse here, but I've been a Sox fan my whole life, but I still can't fathom that they didn't put Ron Sano in the Hall of Fame. Well, you know what? Uh, it's been a long time running, and uh, anyone that's objective, in my opinion, and looks at the numbers and looks at the defense, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Ron Santa was a gold glove third baseman, not just some bum over there who That's could right. hit. And unknown in that era was on-base percentage. I would invite anyone that believes that they have a case against Mr. Santo to take a look at on-base percentage, leading the league in walks with 100 on a couple occasions, while being in the top five in home runs, which you don't see anywhere, anytime, hardly anymore, unless someone's all pumped up on steroids, they walk and hit homers like Bonds. That's, I appreciate that's, it. That's right, Murph. And you, can ask John DeWan, you could ask John DeWan if you want to, but I'm pretty sure that he was like third among all third basemen at the time when he went to when he retired. Well, I believe he was uh, uh, second to uh, Eddie Matthews all time when he retired. Thank you, Coach. I, I, I could just add one more thing. Sure. I would love to know who <laughs> did not vote for Ron Santo. All right, Coach. Good to hear from you, buddy. Couple lines open. Few minutes remaining. And what's your beef? Six four four, six seven, six seven. Let's go next to uh, Southside Tony. Hello, Tone. Murph, what's going on? Hey, Tony. Everything's going on. What's your beef? I got a pretty big beef. I want to get an early beef going to all my Sox fan buddies that are going to start the trash talking early in the season. I want to let them know this is a Cubs town. It always will be. Oh, Tony. Uh, Tony, right that's away. your beef. You had to get me. You had to, you had to put the stick in the beehive on a very fun Tuesday. What's your beef? Thank you, Tony. All right, buddy. Oh, man. Just that we're having a fun day. We got to get the old... You know, like when the bicycle's going by and you don't like the kid down there. So you put, the, you put a uh, yardstick. 
There he goes, right over there. Hey, Murph, can I, can I beef for a second? Jay Zawalski, what's your beef, of course? Uh, as you know, I'm a big Hawks fan. I have a beef with the Blackhawks. What's your beef with the Hawks? The biggest game of the year. Biggest game of the year? Sellout crowd is fired up. They're waiting outside the stadium for hours. Uh-huh. And they put up a goose egg. Oh! They don't show any fight until the yeah. fights break out. No fights till the fights. They're going to need to step up if they have any su- if they want to have any success in the playoffs. Why don't you jump? Sure. Why don't you jump on and tell that to Dale Talon yesterday? I told him off the air. <laughs> I gave him a piece of my mind. I'll tell you. Let's get back. Murph. Yes, I'm busy. What's your oh, second? Oh, don't you Earth never third. ask. Three stars at a game. Now we all already know that uh, Jay Blunt got his first ever Tool of the Week nomination Friday. My friends at Rental Mix got his first nomination. For, there was a snafu. Something got screwed up with the three stars of the game. One of them didn't make it out on the ice last week. But you know what my beef is? The helmets. The helmets? Helmets? We don't need no stinking helmets during the three stars of the game ceremony. Here's it. Jay Blunt, John McDonough, everybody over there. When the game ends, the Hawks win. Do, 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 do. They give the stuff up in the air. They wave the sticks to the fans. They do that cool thing at the center ice. Then the three stars of the game. Here, here's what you do. You take their helmets off. You take their helmets off, so then they go out there, wave to the fans. They do the interview, the star of the game. You can see, hey, he wouldn't have been the Golden Jet, Bobby Hall, if he'd been wearing a stinking helmet. Let's go to uh, Rosemont Mike on the score. Hello, Mike. Hey, Murph, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, hey, fine, what's your beef? Murph, the last straw was when they started pulling hair at the Hawk game the other night. When are they going to ban fighting altogether? I'm sick and tired of the argument that they need fighting for, to protect the skilled players. If there was no fighting, they'd all be skilled players. The thugs wouldn't have a place on the ice. Rosemont Mike offsets the last vote for what's your beef of We Want More Fighting. I love it. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it, buddy. Phone lines are jammed. Everybody's beefing. But let me give you a little uh, a little thought from my friends at Browns. Observers of the Lenten season often give up or do without something as a personal sacrifice. For some, it means giving up eating meat on Fridays. But before you give up Browns, you should know that right now, Browns is offering fish and shrimp meal deals from their seafood menu seven days a week by the way not just fridays uh also uh they have the beer battered cod at browns the delicious delicious uh farm-raised catfish and the golden fantail butterfly shrimp they got you covered at browns for the uh, lenten season also don't forget browns other non-meat menu options (laughs) me i love it the mustard chili marinara meatless and who can't have a little side order of macaroni and cheese from browns give up browns for lent Uh uh-uh no need they got you covered it tastes better let's go to lonesome george from skokie hello george hey mike hey what's your beef well i got a beef i want to know the secret it's a dilemma it's an enigma it's a mystery Uh these people in high places and i'm not going to mention any names Uh uh-huh but he lives at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Okay. He is picking the winners for the NCAA tournament at like a 600 clip. That's better than Joe Crispino. How does he do it? <laughs> I want to know. I'm paying his salary. I got a beef. Better than the Duke? That's right. Thank he, you. As a Sunday, he's 39 and 21. That's better than a World Series. Oh, you know what? We want to be just uh, about 55 45, so we can break even with with the juice, break even with the vigorous. You got to be at least 55 percent. George, you're the best. All righty. Thank you, buddy. Do you know that, Jay? You got to go 55, 45 if you pick 100 NFL games just to break even with the 10 percent that you owe on the losing bets. See, because if you win, let's say you put a, a hundred dollars on 55 games that you win, and a hundred dollars on the 45 games you lose. Well, the 45 games you lose. You got to put the extra ten percent on top of that, so you got to really be about yeah. fifty-five. That's right. What does Doug say again? He who gambles lives That's in shambles. Let's go to uh, Jr. and Tinley Park on the score. Hello, Jr. Hi, Murph. Hey, what's your beef? We got less than a week before baseball season started, yes. and you still yes. haven't done anything with Bud Selig yeah. about getting some conformity with the DH rule between the American League and the National League. Well, you know what? 37 uh, years, Murph. Uh, I know. I tried to reach Bud. Bud Selig declined to talk to us. I'll, I'll say this, Jr. I hate it. But the problem is now, how many years did you say that? Uh, I believe it's this is the 37th year, if I'm not mistaken. Right. It's close. So, see, here's the problem. 
anyone right now 47 years of age or younger, meaning they were 10 years old when they put it in, right? Okay. They've, they've grown up with the DH in the American League. And was, believe it or not, many baseball fans now like the DH because, you know why, I believe it's too confusing for a lot of the uh, armchair uh, fans who watch one game a week or something like that. I'm like you and me, you know, but they're great fans out there. But many fans, but, I think, get confused with double switches and the pitcher batting. And then they rely on the oldest, oldest thing of all time. To, who wants to watch the pitcher bat, which is probably the weakest, lamest argument of all time? Hey, go. Come visit my friends at Bronze. Hang on, JR. The way to the stomach? Go after Murph's heart. And then you go visit Brown's. Oh, man, lunchtime today. I wish I was at Brown's right now. Let's go. A final couple of beefers. Crown Point. Eric is on the score from Indiana. Hello, Eric. Hey, Murph. All right. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks huh? for making it, Eric. I appreciate it. Hey, you know, I got a beef with all the naysayers. You know, rock knocking on the Cubs because they've made the playoffs. Who's doing it, that? The naysayers? Yeah, all the naysayers. All right. You know, all the uh, media writers and all that. Oh, okay. Getting on, getting on the Cubs because they've made the playoffs and haven't won. But, you know, to win the World Series, you have to make the playoffs. Nobody's knocking Bobby Cox in Atlanta. Well, well you know what? Bobby Cox in Atlanta, you're exactly right. How many playoffs? Playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> Thank you. How many playoffs did they make with one World Series? Well, like About 10, in a row. 10, 12, 15. Look it up there, Jay Zawoski. Hey, you know what? You got It's just like the uh, Illinois State uh, Lottery. You got to play to win, and you got to be in it to win. So, uh, Absolutely. Hey, you know what? All the Cubs have to do is win the World Series, and then that'll shut up the naysayers. That'll pipe them all down. There you pipe I love that pipe down. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thanks a lot, Appreciate Mark. it very much. Oh, browns, lunchtime, beefs and browns. Hey, tell you what. Call up your wife right now. Honey, I'm bringing chicken dinner home tonight from Browns. You're not cooking. There's no dishes. You bring home the golden brown, delicious Browns chicken. All the side fixings with the mashed potatoes. You've got uh, the coleslaw. you got the beans. You bring it home from Browns, and you will be king at home tonight. Find the nearest Browns by going to brownschicken.com. My final beef for the day from the South Side is Jeff calls himself Hockey Jeff. Hello, buddy. Hey, what's going on, Mr. Murphy? Hockey Jeff, what's your beef? Well, my beef is that the uh, previous caller saying this is only a Cubs town. Don't they actually have to win something for it to be a, a Cubs town? Oh, I thought it was going to be a pleasant Tuesday on both sides of town. But you know what? I'm in a good mood. I'm very, very benevolent. You're a winner. Go visit my friends at Browns and take a Cubs fan with you. <laughs> well, Jeff, go visit Browns and have a good time. Hang on, buddy. Thanks for participating in What's Your Beef? Join Murph for another edition of What's Your Beef? What's Your Beef has been brought to you by Browns Chicken Sandwiches and Catering and BrownsChicken.com. All winners of the Mike Murphy Show are only eligible to win prizes once in a 60-day period. I'll tell you what, we got Bears Talk coming up around 1.30 with the best in the industry, senior editor, and usually we visit with Michael David Smith every week during the football season, but a lot of Bears chatter, Cubs and Sox chatter, Bulls and Blackhawks, we're busy back in a flash. Murphy Palooza, driven to you by Chevy, drivechicago.com.